Hey everybody, it's Father Richard Gonzalez here. In most of our parishes, I think we can definitely say that mass attendance has dropped. And one of the reasons is the reluctance of some to return to church in a quote, post-COVID world. In a recent study by the American Belief Study that partnered with the ACS Technologies, 63% of respondents said they do not need to go to church. And if you look at the Catholic responses, 69% say believing in Jesus does not require participating in a church. My goodness, what has happened to those 69% of our brothers and sisters? For the Mass is the celebration of the sacrament of the Eucharist, the most treasured gift of the church. This blessed sacrament of which we receive is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ and is the source and summit of our faith. Section 3 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church makes it absolutely clear that we should participate in the communal celebration of the Eucharist. Paragraph number 2182 states, Participation in the communal celebration of the Sunday Eucharist is a testimony of belonging and of being faithful to Christ and to His Church. The faithful give witness by this to their communion and faith and charity. Together, they testify to God's holiness and their hope of salvation. They strengthen one another under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So how or why have Christians lost the connection to participate within the church? To further explain the topic of this video, I encourage you to use the link from the Catholic Link website I have listed below in the description box. As research has discovered, there is definitely a strain of loneliness and a feeling of being disconnected within our group of 13 to 25 year olds. One in three of our young people feel completely alone much of the time, and nearly 40% have no one to talk to and feel completely left out. As the number of trusted adults in a young person's life increases, the feelings of loneliness and isolation decreases. The importance of being connected with like-minded people, of belonging to a group, is important for people of all ages. So it only makes sense that people have a stronger engagement within the church when they feel that they belong as part of the community. And this leads them to an even deeper belief and a desire to become more involved with the community. If you will, as you have invested in me I begin to have a desire to be more involved with the community. The top three reasons people say they are not participating within the church, according to the American Belief Study, are religious people are too judgmental, they do not trust organized religion, and religion is too focused on money. These, along with other reasons, express for some that our parishes have become accustomed to doing things a certain way. We've done it this way for over a hundred years and we're going to keep on doing it. We're not going to change. This does not work for most people. We cannot use the axiom, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because obviously, if there are less people in your parish or your parish organization, something needs to change. When asked what they were seeking in a church, the overall top response is warm and friendly encounters. For Catholics, responding to the same American Belief Study, the top three responses were warm and friendly encounters, in other words, hospitality, celebration of the sacraments, and quality of sermons. My brothers and sisters, these are opportunities for us. So what should we do? Here are three ways parish leaders can inspire church attendance. First of all, focus externally. In addition to serving and inspiring parishioners, make visitors a priority. Assign a team of people at every Mass and every parish celebration to talk with people they do not recognize. Talk with them, engage with them, gather their contact information, and follow up with them. This can lead to a new ministry within your parish. Do not be afraid to try something new. Create ways for people to be more involved with the parish, that they may get to know you and your community. Again, all of these points I mentioned are marks of hospitality. Number two, excellence in Mass and sacraments. 
place a high priority on all of the liturgies, especially the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, starting with welcome and hospitality. Through the appearance of the sanctuary, through the appearance of the entirety of the church, to the music and the liturgy, so that the experience is mystical and inspiring. Our celebration of the Holy Eucharist should be special, mystical, beautiful, and awe-inspiring. Ensure that the overall atmosphere of the Mass is reverential for both traditional and contemporary celebration. And number three, compelling homilies. Now I realize this one is for my clergy brethren, my brothers, even if you consider yourself to be a good homilist, ask wise parishioners to periodically give you advice. Get help on defining your message. For example, some of my priest friends and I, we talk with each other, we ask each other for homily ideas for an upcoming weekend. The homily is a part of the excellent Mass experience and can be the one opportunity you have to teach, guide, challenge, and inspire. So belief in Jesus may not require participating in church, but it quickly becomes a lonely one-person belief with no support and little sustenance. As a priest recently said, in the 21st century, it is difficult for people to come to belief in Jesus without first experiencing the sense of acceptance and love that comes with belonging to a community rooted in Jesus. So in your journey with your parish community, may God bless you today, tomorrow, and always, and I'll see you real soon. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, consider giving it a thumbs up like, subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and hitting the notification bell and the all tab so you are notified of all future videos on my YouTube channel.